Hey, what's good everybody? Welcome to part one of my Bitwig review. We have a lot of stuff to cover and I'm gonna to try to not waste any time getting through the sheer amount of information that I'm going to be throwing at you. If for whatever reason I miss something or an update comes out, we're currently on 3.1.3 beta or something of the similar sort then please feel free to sound off in the comments and i will try to make the proper adjustments and make them aware to all of us i've had this program for about three months and i really wanted to make sure that i took the time to get to know the ins and outs of it not that i've mastered it by any means because nobody can master a daw and that amount of time but i've definitely made sure that i can navigate and figure out how to put something together so this is it this is bitwig let's go ahead and talk about the workflow dynamic all right so if you're coming from ableton then chances are you're going to feel very close to home with a lot of information that's on here that's being displayed one of the big key differences on here is that you're going to notice that there's an inspector panel over here on the left it's actually really cool and very refreshing because it gives you a lot of other information that's going to help you kind of decide a lot of other things if you don't like Lurk, working in the device menu unless if you absolutely have to then you can always take that off and give you more real estate but you'll see that when the track is highlighted over here on the left I can still see a list of devices and still pull them up over from the side which is pretty cool I don't know why I have absinthe pulled up I haven't used this in years but <laughs> Yeah. If you have some kind of highlighted track or you have some kind of other information as well, you'll get uh, more parameters of some sort where you can kind of see how if we click on this, you get all the different warp modes. And that means that in some cases you won't have to double click to make changes or do specific modulations. It's all kind of right there, which is pretty cool. So with that, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other windows that we have right now. This is kind of the editor mode where you can edit your audio and MIDI. We'll talk about those in a future video. If we click on on this is this is our automation where we can find parameters to automate speaking of we can also click on the little three dots here and do the same thing where we can find whatever we can automate and make lines with double clicks and XYZ so that's how you do automation if you are looking for something specific that you want to automate let's say I have an instance of amp pulled up you can still do the same thing where you click and drag and then hit the plus button and it will pull up right there. And you'll see that those are being automated in real time, which is pretty neat. Over here on the right, you have this folder that you can either expand or collapse, which is one of your browser windows, but it's not the only browser window that's on here. I definitely had to take some time to make sure that all of my favorites were set up and presets and all that stuff, but that's kind of an afternoon's work. And once you get past that, then it becomes pretty easy to navigate. You're gonna have to be mindful of this though, because if you have presets set up and you're like looking in the device menu, then you might not find what you're looking for so just kind of be mindful of all that stuff whenever you're looking through all of this but speaking of one of the really cool things that you may or may not have noticed when I pulled the amp up is that if I push on the plus button here a browser window pops up and it's already set to where I can automatically insert a search function coming from Ableton that's a very common thing that has been adopted with a lot of the people's workflow where you would go into the file browser and then you would type it in but instead of having to click on the specific folder or the specific plugin menu XYZ you can just type this in of let's say I want to do serum right and then boom there's serum effects if I want to come down here and find something else there's my instrument there's serum if I want to find phase plant I can do that as well which is pretty cool and then of course you can go ahead and toggle between the, the categories so it's really neat and I really encourage this kind of workflow because it just it's so easy to search for things so I typically don't even use this window I kind of hop off of that and then I kind of just push the plus button and then add things as I need so speaking of other Ableton relative features let me go ahead and reverse this over here we can do the same thing where this calls it nested devices but we might all know it as groups or groups within groups which you can absolutely do so all we have to do is is we can highlight this right here and then hit group and then you'll see that that's available it's kind of a different layout you'll see that there is this little blue bar that highlights this over here and we can click on our effects but that helps us dictate if we want to have something be on the inside versus on the outside and just like tracks and uh, group tracks as well you can do the same thing where you have groups within groups within groups and I can kind of show you here here are my basic drums then I have a sidechain group, and then I have some other random things that I'm not really even using. Next up is the clip launcher, which is 
pretty neat. So if I hit L, then you'll notice that the clip launcher pulls up right next to the timeline. And so as opposed to having to hit tab for session view, I can just pull this up right here. And if you guys have seen my video on how to implement a workflow with this, then you'll know that you can basically build scenes right here and add them directly to your timeline and kind of play between the two seamlessly. It's all in one window. And it's really neat because that means that I can kind of keep everything working very quickly. Or if I do something with audio and I want to create several different renditions of it, then I can click and drag it and put in here for later. It's also a way that you can kind of pseudo implement multi-stage envelopes which we'll cover in a future video but it's pretty cool with uh, all that stuff. The clip launcher in itself works very similar to Ableton. It's kind of confusing sometimes because of how linear this is at points but again with all of these windows it's pretty neat because you can expand them and collapse them and kind of fit your workflow up to however you need and then you can also kind of focus just on one of these as well so if you want to focus more on your scenes you can kind of toggle between that. If you want to only focus on specific tracks then you can go into your project and then only focus on the drums and etc etc so there's a ton of flexibility that you can have without having to feel like you need to switch between a lot of menus the mix function is also over here in case if you want to see like a classic mixer view this is something that i almost never work in personally but it's there if you need it and then if you want to get into like really in-depth editing within your MIDI and stuff, which we'll talk about in a future video, there's also a panel for that as well. It's pretty awesome. I mean, in general, this, I, I just love the way that Bitwig looks. It's It looks very modern and that's something that I've been hoping to get from a DAW for a long time now. So I'm very pleased with how everything is kind of laid out. It's very refreshing. The next thing that I want to talk about is the fact that you can do custom shortcuts. One thing that I will talk about in the future with editing audio is the fact that you are kind of limited in the way that you do some time stretching but it's not to say that it's absolutely completely limited so one custom feature that i've done is i've gone ahead and hit brackets to do scaling which is basically stretching either lengthening or shortening samples and if i hit a close bracket it will make it cut in half and if i hit an open bracket it will double it but that's not a shortcut that was typically within bitwig that's something that i set myself so you can go into your settings here and go into shortcuts and anything that can potentially have a shortcut you can pretty much map You'll notice right here that there's this thing right here that says new and if i go to new project it's pretty neat you'll notice that it opens up a new project so you can have multiple projects open at once you'll notice that there's an activate audio engine tab right here and that basically means that you can only have one project playing at a time but if you're doing sound design in a particular project and then you're ready to start arranging then you can pretty much drag something bring it over to the new project and place it wherever you like and it kind of works in a seamless manner now to me the reason why i wouldn't do this personally is because it kind of takes away from the fact that I was bragging about with the clip launch view of like not having to switch between tabs but at the same time it's a great way to save yourself some CPU if you're trying to turn an audio engine off and then kind of pick and choose whatever samples you want and just kind of start fresh without having to take everything away or go digging in your folder so it's all kind of there in one way or another which you know is is a nice feature to have for me I typically kind of limit myself to only having one project but hey the world is yours so next up on top of the panel you will see that we have our transposition settings and all that this is your cpu you can click on this to check your dsp performance yeah one cool feature that you will also notice is that if you find something that you like within these expandable menus right here right here you'll see these little thumbnails let's say i want to add the overdub to the top of the menu bar you'll see it right there and now i can take that and add that on or off which is pretty cool for me one thing that i definitely made sure to keep on is this right here which is the reverse clip so i can just come over here and click that if i want want to I can also hit R as well sorry I just had to double check because I wasn't totally completely sure yeah as far as exporting goes you do have a few options but for the most part you are relatively limited when it comes to uh, being compared to Ableton if we go over here to export then we can kind of cover what we got you can pick your loop range which is a little bit easier to select as opposed to having to make sure that you highlight everything it's nice that this will give you a double check of like oh I only I did I forgot to highlight the region that I want to that I want to export because for me I leave a lot of extra sound and stuff on the timeline from sound design and stuff so I can hit that loop region and it will kind of correct that for me we have our 
bit depth options, which goes all the way up to 32 bit. And then we have the real time dither pre fader open. It's kind of cool that you can set up some other things with this as well and then tell it where it wants to go, XYZ. It's kind of unfortunate that it doesn't export MP3s, but it's not that big of a deal. You can also pick which individual tracks that you want to do, which is pretty cool. So if you wanted to come here, then you can just do drums and do that, which is why grouping your tracks is so important in the first place, right? So the next feature that I want to talk about is the fact that you can bring up an onboard keyboard. Now, for me, I don't have a touch screen, but if you did, then you can basically play all of this stuff on a keyboard here. You can also hit the caps lock button if you want to play with your QWERTY keyboard. It was kind of confusing for me that I couldn't figure that out a while ago. It was kind of confusing that I couldn't figure that out. I had literally had to Google it. I'm like, surely there's a way that you can play this on your QWERTY keyboard. But there is a couple of settings that you can do as far as the layout goes, which you'll find over here. It's which is pretty neat. So within that, you'll see that there are a couple of other different things that you can look at, which are your in out panels, which I don't really mess with that much, but this is if you're going out to speakers where I only use headphones. And then this one right here is just particular controller MIDI mappings. As of now, I believe that Bitwig is relying on the users to create controller scripts. So that's where that might become useful to you in the future. And then regarding this panel, this is actually really cool because if you take a look, you can kind of fill in all the metadata right here and take a look at all the files of everything that's coming in. If there are some missing files, then it will kind of tell you. If you've got some external stuff going on, it will tell you as well. But one thing that I like in particular is the fact that it will show you all of the plugins that you're using within the project. And this is great if you're trying to do something that's like collaborations, because as opposed to having to make a list and say, well, I've got this plugin, this plugin, this plugin, this plugin, this plugin, whatever, you can pretty much just take a screenshot of this, send it over to somebody and they're like, hey, I don't have this, then you can stem that out and send that portion to them as part of the project file. All that stuff is fine and Danny, but what the heck is the point of all of this and how does it make it different from every other doc? Well, I'm glad you asked or I'm glad I asked myself. So if you didn't know already, the entire system of Bitwig is natively modular. You'll notice right here that you'll see these plus buttons and this basically means that we can add a modular device to it and anything can be modular, even third party VSTs. If we look over here, you'll notice that it will automatically set up some kind of macros for you and you can set up new macro controllers and there's a bunch of different things that you can do with that I invite you to explore but over here we basically have a full wide range list of modulators which I'm not going to cover them all but you can kind of see that it's pretty there's a lot. The only thing that this doesn't have that I wish that it did was a dedicated multi-stage envelope generator. But to be honest, especially with random or sorry, especially with sound design, I end up using the random anyways. And it's cool because we have a bunch of different parameters that we can open up by kind of expanding the menu here. Right now, this is set to kind of like a square wave on the random. We can turn that to smooth it out. We can make it more subtle. We can make this bipolar and there's just so many options. And once we click this button here, just like how you would on a map control in Ableton, we can kind of click and drag this into different ways. And then once we click that again, you'll see that this will move at a random pace. So when I hit a note, you'll notice that this is kind of doing all the randomization things and whatnot, which is pretty neat. Like this is so crazy. And this like really is overlooked by quite a bit because you can modulate your modulators. So if I wanted to add an LFO to something else, let's say I wanted to LFO the randomization, I can hit this and now this is turning this. So now the randomization speed is being modulated by this LFO. And if I wanted to, I can add in another LFO and modulate the speed of this LFO. And you can kind of just see like how deep this rabbit hole goes. And I really encourage you guys to like not be so afraid of sound design and just like spend an afternoon and do stuff like this because it's really fun and it's really cool. And there's like, this really makes things so much more fun to do sound design with. And I can't tell you how many times I wish I can just set up a particular LFO or a particular thing that I can set and forget. And it really like makes me not worry about automation so much, which I really try to get as far away from automation as I possibly can. That's not to say that I don't automate a lot of things, but if I can avoid it, I definitely try to. Some other things to cover, Bitwig does not cover or does not have a video player. So if you are a sound designer, like right now on stream, I'm doing things in sound design. I still have to do it in Ableton because there's no video player. However, Bitwig does offer hybrid tracks, which is pretty cool. I've covered it in another video, but basically what that means is you can right click this and turn this into a hybrid track. And what that means, I can have MIDI and I can also have audio both on the same track. Now, where this would come into play is if you have something in MIDI and then you want to bounce it in place. So let's say I 
double click a region right here and I just have a C. I just go here and I make this legato and I'm like, okay, get out of that. And then I'm like, okay, great. I really like this. I can right click this, go bounce into place and then boom. And this is kind of what you have in place of freezing and flattening tracks. There's two different ways to do it. You can bounce in place or you can bounce to a new track. If you bounce in place, then it's only going to take what the source audio is. So it's not going to bounce at all the effects. If you bounce to a new track, then it will take all of the effects that you have after. And you can also do that with a master track as well if you want to bounce that. So like if I wanted to get all of the effects, let's say I had a bunch of stuff that was on the FM4, don't know what it is, I can say like, all right, like an amp or something, then I can come into here and I can create a clip, then I can go right click bounce in place and you'll see that I have the audio from that as well which is kind of cool and then I can move it into a different place it's kind of weird that you can put stuff on your master track but you'll get used to it so another really important thing within Bitwig is that it has the ability to sandbox plugins and basically what that means is while it does sometimes cost a little bit more CPU it will basically control or contaminate or <laughs> quarantine all of the plugins within the sandbox in itself. So if a plugin crashes rather than destroying the whole program, it will kind of contain it within its own right, let it shut down, and then you can kind of relaunch the VST within itself. It's not to say that Bitwig is crash free. I've had already a couple crashes from Bitwig. Granted, it is in a beta form, but it definitely lowers the particular chances of something like that happening. So on Pro-Q3, if I go over here and I click on this, you'll be able to see that this says uh, suspend trust plugin. And if I go and click on this, I'll say never. And that will basically kind of make sure that it's kind of keeping an eye on that whenever I need to, you know, manipulate this. If you trust the plugin, then if it crashes, then it kind of gives you that leeway. But, you know, it's kind of up to you. But that's something that may or may not be useful to you as well. So one final thing that I wanted to cover within the general workflow of like kind of getting used to everything is that you have the ability to sidechain via modulators on this. So right now within this nested device, I am using Gatekeeper, but what I was using before, just because I like to remember how to do it, is a couple of tools that is helping me sidechain any audio that's coming into this. If I click here and click on this, you'll see that right now this is coming from Kick2 and this one is coming from a phase plant snare. And they're not compressors, but they kind of act like that, which is kind of cool, but it's just ducking the audio within this tool. And the tool is like a utility, so to speak. So it's a very clean way to sidechain if you don't have something like Gatekeeper, whereas Gatekeeper was just like very easy to set up and I already had it. But yeah, it's a great alternative to kind of do that. And once you have this set up, you never have to do it again. You also have your send tracks, which is kind of cool. We will talk more so about that when we get into the drum rack as far as the instruments and effects goes, but they are there. I guess your return tracks, so to speak, if that's what you're used to calling them is right here. And then you can kind of send all of those within the inspector, which would be right here. And then side one effect, and you just send it that way. So that's pretty much how you can navigate around this. If you know, you're like, oh yeah, this kind of seems similar, then you'd be absolutely right. There's a couple of other things that I didn't cover, like as far as like how to, you know, change the grid and stuff. Those are all pretty standard features that I don't think are very unique to Bitwig in their own right. So yeah, that's it for part one. Next up, we're going to be looking at how to do some cool stuff with audio followed by Biddy, and that will conclude the first part of the series for the overall general workflow of like how to do things within Bitwig. But yeah, guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that it was informal to you, and I will see you in the next video.